Assalamualaikum, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have a special session with the president of Association of Professional Researchers and Academicians, the APRA Malaysia chapter, who is Dr. Abdullah Muhammad Nawi. Dr. Abdullah Muhammad Nawi, also known as Dr. A. <laughs> Okay, Dr. A, I believe you guys have seen him before in AIC and AIMC previously. The face is always there, right? <laughs> it's good to see you again, Dr. A. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah, thank you for joining us. So, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, a little bit busy as usual, a little bit flustered because of having to drive all the way from Johor and then going into traffic, the usual thing. But... None the worse for where I'm good. Thank you very much for asking. Yes, you're all done. Hulila. So, um, for information, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Abdullah is also former assistant dean, external and global engagement from a faculty of social science and humanities, UTM, who is also specialized in the corporate communication, communication training for universities and corporate branding. Wow. Amazing, Dr. A. <laughs> So now, Dr. A, as the president of the opera, right? Could you share to us what opera has done so far? Okay, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sophia. Um, now, I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer that question first of all by spelling out the opera. So the opera is the Association of Professional Researchers and Academicians. And uh, what we do is we connect researchers together. So that's the biggest, uh, the biggest function of, of the APRA. And from there, you would be amazed to know that we actually have seven countries where we have a presence. So there are seven countries. Now, the APRA is headquartered in the UK, the United Kingdom. And we have chapters in Malaysia, in Pakistan, in Indonesia, in Bahrain, in Nigeria, and in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And that's a, it's a really big network. Uh, and I'm the president of the Malaysian uh, chapter. And um, what we do is, uh, so far, we've, we've been working together very closely with our sister organization, Connect in Asia, um, organizing online events and uh, we work with international universities and organizations where we try to develop a consortium. So with the consortium, there is going to be a potential for a lot more resources, a lot more research, a lot more funding, a lot more collaboration. So we want to bring everything together under one. And this is a very exciting time for us because where people have been, where organizations have been contracting, not contracting, contracting, mm -hmm. then come smaller because of the, because of what's been happening in the world. Yeah. My team, we've actually been expanding mm -hmm. and uh, we've, we, uh, uh, we are going on this wave of, of expansion simply because we are using the potential of technology. So, again, we bring people together, we bring researchers together, we bring research together. And what we've done so far is we've done training uh, at an international level, um, whereas especially uh, from our headquarters in the UK. And we've done publishing where we publish uh, all sorts of books and academic materials and also we especially are going to carry out major events in the future. So, so watch out for that. So that's going to be really, really exciting. Yeah. And um, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I also can't wait. Yes. Okay, Dr. A, as the president of APRA and also a lecturer, you are familiar with research. So your research, how many PhD students you have right now? <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I, when you talk about comparing me with uh, other researchers, sometimes I feel very, very inadequate. <laughs> but I do have some uh, some research experience, and I have eleven PhD students currently under me, and I've graduated uh, three so far. Uh, again, 
uh, compared to senior uh, professors, that's almost nothing, but it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, but it's good enough for now, right? Oh, yes. and so, so what would be your advice for those who are just starting research? Okay, so for those who are just starting research now, hmm, interesting question. I think the first thing that you need to do is you need to have passion because if you don't have passion, you need, you, need, you need to be passionate about your field of study. Because if you don't have that passion, at the end of a very difficult work year, there's nothing that's going to drive you to continue with your research. And I think as researchers, everybody's been through this sort of cycle where you get excited about something, but then again, work comes yeah, in, you get tired, time. you lose momentum. Right, right. I lose the momentum. Yeah, and when you, once you lose momentum, it's very difficult to get yourself back on track unless you are very passionate about your field of study. So the one that I would say is uh, you need to find passion, but at the same time, uh, yeah. So with the passion, you also need to find the problems that you feel that are being faced and how you want to overcome these problems. But also at the same time, now this is what I tell people uh, for Hollywood, I'll give you an example here. Yeah? For Hollywood, Hollywood normally, uh, actors, they do two things. They would do the big budget movie and then they would do the art. Okay. So the art movie is normally something which they're passionate about, but that normally doesn't, there's not enough of funding. So it's, it's like a smaller thing, but it's something that they're passionate about. But at the same time, they have to play the game where they have to go for these big budget moves. So similar to that, if you are a researcher, yes, you do need passion. And if the field that you're passionate about and you work on it and you're able to, to secure funding for that field, then it's a match made in heaven. But more often than not, what you need to do is I need to see what are the grants that are available because with these grants, every single grant, there's going to be different focuses. So what you need to be able to do is you need to balance between your passion and how you can adapt your passion to these various other research projects with funding. So that also means that you may need to be cross disciplinary, mm -hmm. which is my next point that you need to find a good team to work with. It's very, you can publish by yourself, but it does get very challenging. I'm, I'm sure you have had that experience yourself when yeah. you try to self, when you want, when you want to work just, just by yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you have a team, uh, even, even just another person that you work with and that person's field is not exactly the same as yours, but you can complement each other. So they would have their own uh, field of research, you would have your own, and you're enriched by each other. Clear of each other's strengths, and you use each other's networks. So that's one of the, the best things about working together with people. And if possible, what you want to do is you would want to find partners or group members who are established researchers. So professors, they're, they're famous. So when you will work with famous people and famous, not like famous, but you know, established people, yeah. number one, you're learning from them, which is very, very important. But number two, people know them. And when you want to publish with their name, the chances are that you're going to get published more <laughs> because of the presence of the uh, the experienced group member. So teamwork is the other one. Find a good team member and go as much as possible. Try and see if you can go and be transdisciplinary. And the last one is connected. Find yourself a good mentor because you can see years off of your learning curve if you find a good mentor or somebody to guide you or not believe. So these would be the most important tips that I think. Thank you so much, Dr. A. But when we talk about team, right, uh -huh. we talk about research group, how you deal with any conflict 
or disagreement previously within the research. <laughs> okay, all right. So this this may be a very sensitive <laughs> topic uh, because it you deal with people and it's it, you need people skills. So for me, I think the very first thing is before that happens, mm -hmm. it's very very important for you to select good members. So try and mitigate the problem right from the very beginning. Work with people who you can work with. Who? So that if you know that there are some people who are troublemakers, try and stay away from mm -hmm. them. But there is still a lot of uncertainty. So you, you, you never know who you're going to be working with, especially if you do big budget research, then, then lots of people coming in. Um, so you do have to know people skills. And I think that that's a, that's a very important point, not just for researchers, but for everybody, you need to know how to talk to people. You need to know how to convey their ideas to them. And you need to be able to disagree with people. And disagreeing with people is an art. You don't just, no, that's wrong. You've got to do it in a way where the picture, okay. And then how, if you can put in a little bit of persuasion uh, using, my favorite is using Aristotle's three modes of persuasion, using um, ethos, pathos, and logos. <laughs> <laughs> so if you combine these three elements together and um, you know how to talk to people uh, I think we should be able to mitigate some of these problems. Soft skills plus communication uh, skills. Soft skills from communication mm -hmm. skills, yeah. So now, please tell us about your research or maybe your research interests. Okay, but, but that's, a, that's a question that I haven't, <laughs> I haven't dealt with in a long time, mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, my, my job has brought me through so many areas. Yeah, because you're so busy. Busy is one, but the field of the, the scope of my job has not been the same for the past seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. By training, I was a, a language teacher, and as a lecturer, I I teach uh, language. I teach English, but I also train teachers. I train TESOL teachers. Um, in-service teachers, pre-service teachers as well. That's the core of it. And my field of study in my PhD is uh, methodology, so specifically using creative methodology and using drama, applied drama, to teach the English language. And applied drama is not what people think. When people say drama, people always think about, oh, Romeo, my Romeo. Well, that, that is, that's partly drama. Uh but what a practitioner of applied drama does is they take the elements that are found on stage and they use them within a language teaching classroom. So that's, that's the area that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, I've gone past that because that is, but by training, I teach language. Latin communication, but at the same time now, that has expanded because when I talk about communication, my previous portfolio before this, I was the deputy director of corporate affairs for UTN. Um, and I was in charge of corporate branding, a corporate communication and branding. So that factored into what my specialties are currently. And then from that portfolio, I went back to faculty and I became the assistant dean for external and global engagement. So internationalization, but at the same time, at the very core, what I can tell you is that even though these areas are different, they're all connected by one thing, which is communication. So talk about teaching English, you talk about teaching and training teachers, you talk about how to communicate to students, how to teach. When you talk about commun corporate communication and branding, it is how do you communicate to the outside world? As the university, how do you communicate to them? How do you communicate to stakeholders? How do you communicate to the people inside your university? Mm -hmm. And the last one is, how do you communicate? What, what did I say the last one was just now? 
it was uh, communication, communication, and uh, training. But this happens to you sometimes. I talk, <laughs> my brain gets no scared. Gets scared. So communication is communication the key. is the key, and it's all about communication in various different forms. So communication is very, very. Yeah, I remember my mentor said the most important thing is the communication key. Uh, communication skill yeah. because when you open your mouth you tell the world who you are yeah. Yeah. and communication is not just about all communication mm-hmm. you have written communication um, you have communication to your brand um, the, the, there are lots of things but definitely it's something that needs to be mastered how we communicate to everyone outside mm-hmm. so that's very very important so it's good to attend conference, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Attend mm-hmm. conferences, mm-hmm. come to Connected Asia conferences, yeah. come to the Apple conferences. <laughs> so do you see this event positively impacting research and networking goals? Definitely. And uh, with, with, with events like these, it, <laughs> they provide training to, especially to budding researchers, <laughs> a, a fertile breeding ground for ideas, for them to share their ideas, to present, to communicate, and to publish. Because right now, everything is about publishing. So, you want to publish? Start off with conferences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, final question from me. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest as a future growth opportunities for this event? For future growth, I would say more international partnerships, Mm -hmm. working hand-in-hand, Connecting Asia and the APRA, I think with what we have at the moment, there's just so much more that can be developed. So many more partners, so many more opportunities. All we need to do is we need to be aware of the opportunities and what's happening in the world so that we can connect and we can take the opportunity to, to expand the organization stand to expand the knowledge. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. We learned a lot from you. And can't wait to wait for your session tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, doing the fourth uh, sim, uh, forum, right? Yes. Forum. So, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow then. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone.